All right, best of the year heater edition this time. And start with number one, as voted by you guys, the number one most popular. And what you guys recommend each other and pick up from us, and what is it? It's the BRS Titanium Heating Element by a landslide. Huge amount, <laughs> gigantic amount. Yes, uh, you can call it the BRS heater, but you could also call it the Chagot heater. Uh, we uh, imported from them. It's a German made. When you touch this thing and feel it, you will know that it's different. It is a heavy, heavy duty titanium heater. Uh, it has three year warranty on the thing. The thing is built to, to last. And that is the number one as voted by you guys. All right, well, uh, that popular heater doesn't come with its own heater controller. Uh, part of the value there is because the heater controllers actually wear out the fastest, right? Uh, and they turn on and off, on and on and off. Uh, if we separate them, well, the heater element will actually last a long time in most cases. So we'll separate it and then only have to replace the heater controller. But as voted by all of you, what is the most popular heater controller? It's actually this Inkbird Wi-Fi heater controller, and uh, it's actually one of my favorites too. It's got a pair of sensors, so you got some redundancy there. It can take up to two heaters, and you guys just love this thing. Yeah, very, very, very popular. There it is. All right, best heater for entry level or when you're on a budget? That's gonna be the Eheim uh, Jaeger heater. Uh, they're a really great uh, bimetal thermostat heater. They've got a very uh, hard glass. Some glass heaters are easy to break. These ones are less easy to break. Uh, plus, they can actually be recalibrated. Okay, the calibration is important in my mind because these things tend to drift uh, for me. So over time, make sure to pay attention and, and double check it. Use your you know, you know thermometer uh, and find out because it does. It has a little knob on here where you can change it to calibrate it. Uh, and then the drift doesn't really matter. Uh, this is one of the most inexpensive options out there. This is what people, freshwater, saltwater alike, have been trusting yeah. for a really long time. And I gotta tell you, we talk about redundancy, and we talk about alarms, and we talk about monitoring. If the only thing that you did was take that one and throw it in the trash every year and replace it, because they don't all have like an infinite timeline and just waiting for it to break has a very bad outcome for most of you. Uh, if you just replaced it every year and it has a usable life, treat it that way. Well, you know what? You're probably gonna have about the same success rates as many people who put in redundancy as well because you're respecting the lifespan of the equipment. All right, best heating element where reliability matters. Like I need this thing to work. What is it? Not surprised. Yeah, it's gonna be the uh, Shago heater again, uh, the BRS heater. Again, it's from Germany. This thing's built like a ton of bricks. It's built to last. It has a three-year warranty, which says a lot about it. Not many elements go past one year. It, you're lucky if you find one for two years. And uh, these things just keep going. There's actually one of the most popular heaters out there actually is warrantied for like six months. Even the manufacturer doesn't believe that it's going to last uh, as long as we think we do. It really will. So three years is a big deal. And in the end, Germans just make good stuff. All right, best low profile heater. These things fit in some places others don't. Yeah, and that's going to be the Aquiel heater. And this thing might look a little wide from the front, but you turn it sideways and it's pretty dang thin. Mm -hmm. uh, some of you may remember the uh, Neotherm from Cobalt Aquatics. Well, uh, that's because Aqua EL actually made it for them. So uh, there's been many generations of this thing, and this is ultimately where it landed. But I mean, people find places you can put these things that are really, really low profile and out of the way, and a good, really, really good option for that. All right, so best temperature controller for redundancy. What is it? That's gonna be this ink bird again. Uh, the fact that it has two temp probes means one can fail or read wrong and you're still covered. Plus you've got two outlets for two different heaters. So if you're using for, example, two Jaeger heaters, and one of them just decides to poop out a little sooner than you were expecting, you're not completely out of heat. You still have another heater going. It's a really great option, especially if you then also back it up with another uh, controller, like your aquarium controller. The redundancy there is, in many cases, if you had a single 500 watt heater, well, you could just have two 250s uh, and plugged into both those holes. So really, really redundant. Uh, usually plugged into another uh, temperature controller because uh, you never want to have only one of these in saltwater aquariums. All right, best new technology to enter uh, the uh, heating space of reef tanks. That's gonna be the uh, Innovative Marine Helio PTC or Positive Temperature Coefficient Heaters. Uh, number one, these things are tiny compared to other heaters. The element is really, really small, which can be convenient, but the PTC technology is really uh, what makes it different. And from my understanding, which albeit is limited, 
Basically, they have a override protection inside them, so they can't really overheat. The hotter they get, the more resistance there is, and it prevents the heater from ever getting to a temperature that's going to destroy itself. Again, this is new technology, so I'll probably butcher it too, but it is like a ceramic material that as the heat gets past where it's set to, increases the resistance and just doesn't allow it to overheat. Uh, I will tell you, that uh, new technology, you're a little bit of uh, the trailblazer here. I have used two of them and uh, they didn't last as long as I would like, but there might just be uh, the future of reefing. So keep watching the reviews on these things and maybe we'll learn something new about how to heat our tanks. All right, so all that said, which one would you use? Uh, what I'm currently using, I'm really happy with, and on my tank, I'm using the BRS uh, Shago heating element along with the Inkbird Wi-Fi heater controller, but I do have it plugged into my Apex for that one extra layer of redundancy. Uh, for me, if I was uh, giving guidance to uh, a newer reefer, a reefer on a budget, for sure, it is going to be the Eheim plugged into any old controller. The Eheim has like a bimetal thermostat that just kind of bends and opens and closes, not a lot of electronics involved, real simple technology. Uh, then plug it into any controller. For me, all of the controllers kind of like, none of them really stand out for me as better than the other one. So plug it into any controller, uh, but if it was my own tank, Every single time I'm going to pick the uh, Shago or BRS heater, I'm going to plug it into any controller. It really doesn't matter to me for the most part. And then, of course, plug it into the Apex. Uh, and the way that I would set this up, by the way, is I want to put the aquarium or the, the heater controller yeah. first. Yeah. Uh, it's the cheaper one. It is like more likely to fail than the Apex. I want the cheapest thing first because I want to make sure that the uh, redundancy behind it is always working instead of a inverse. You'll hear different opinions, but I will set up. So if I use the ink bird, I'd set it up at 78 degrees. I'd set up my apex to turn off at 79, yeah. as well as alert me to, hey, you know what? The ink bird crapped the bed. It's time to change it. That's what I would do. All right, I think controllers are actually next. You probably see it in the whole list here. We're building it uh, one at a time. You're gonna see everything. If you're looking for gear and you wanna know what it does and you want like decades of experience of what uh, all of us do, we do this for a living. We touch and feel it all. All of our knowledge found in this little playlist right here.